welcome to the next lecture in electrical machines in this lecture we are going to start our discussion on synchronous motors we have already discussed the alternators as a part of a synchronous machine and in synchronous motor the first topic that we are going to discuss is basically the introduction and the characteristics synchronous motor is electrically identical with an alternator so if we have understood an alternator it means that majority of the part of a synchronous motor we have understood because the synchronous motor is electrically identical to an alternator synchronous machines operate as an alternator or a motor if it is driven mechanically or electrically so when the synchronous machine is driven mechanically it means it is operating as an alternator when the synchronous machine is driven electrically we can say it to be operating as an motor generally the rating of synchronous machine falls in between 150 kilowatt to 15 megawatt and the speed range from 150 rpm to 800 rpm some typical characteristic features of the synchronous motor are it is not a self starting motor we have discussed in induction motor that the induction motor three phase are basically self starting motor whereas the synchronous motor is not a self starting motor second point is for a given frequency it operates only at one particular speed which is known as the synchronous speed and it is given by ns is equal to 120 f by p where f represent the frequency of the supply and p represent the number of poles then we get ns that is the synchronous speed of the machine that is the frequency and the number of poles will decide the speed generally the poles of the motor is fixed so by changing the frequency we can change the speed of the machine it can be operated under a wide range of power factor both lagging as well as leading that is the main advantage of a synchronous motor synchronous motor can be operated over a wide range of power factor so whenever we are requiring a lagging or the leading power factor we can make use of the synchronous motor in addition to the motor being used for the mechanical load it is also used as a power factor improvement device which is known as the synchronous condenser so we know that any motor is generally used as a mechanical load so apart from using it as a mechanical load since the synchronous motor operates for both lagging as well as leading power factor it is used for the power factor improvement equipment which is known as the synchronous condenser at no load it draws a very small current from the mains to meet the internal losses of the motor so when the motor is operating under the no load condition then the current drawn will be very small and this current will be used to deal with the internal losses of the motor now when the load increases obviously the torque angle will increase due to which the motor will draw more current it means that the increase in the load of the motor is being tracked by the motor with the increase in the load angle this load angle tells the motor to draw the load large amount of the current after the input current reaches the maximum the maximum is reached when the delta that is the torque angle reaches to 90 degree no further increase in load is possible so this is the maximum point till which the motor can be loaded if the motor is further loaded it goes out of synchronism and it stops we know that the synchronous motor has to run at a particular speed known as the synchronous speed now if the motor load is increased continuously and the torque angle exceeds the 90 degree then the motor will goes out of synchronism and then it will stop now let us discuss the principle of operation generally 
for any synchronous machine we have two parts one is known as the stator and another is the rotor so stator is the one which is stationary where we give the supply that is the three phase and the rotor is the one which is rotating so when a three phase supply is given to the stator of a three phase synchronous motor a revolving field is set up we know that ac machine whether it is a induction motor or a synchronous machine rotating magnetic field is produced this rotating magnetic field is produced when we give a three phase supply to the stator coils so a revolving field which is the rotating field is produced which is rotating at a synchronous speed given by 120 f by two. now consider that the rotor revolving field is rotating in the anti clockwise direction now the field will represent by the imaginary stator coils so three phase supply given to the stator will generate the revolving field which is represented with the stator pole so we can see here we have represented the north pole and the south pole which represent the stator poles and these poles are corresponding to the revolving magnetic field the opposite poles of stator and rotor are facing each other so at a particular point the field of the rotor that is the south pole and the pole of the stator that is the north pole these are opposite poles they are facing each other now come we consider a two pole machine for the simplicity so here we have the north pole and south pole are facing each other so both the poles are opposite in nature there is a force of attraction between them because both the poles are of opposite in nature so force of attraction will be there and anti clockwise torque will be produced in the rotor which is rotating and the rotor poles are dragged by the stator revolving poles or the field the rotor which has the tendency to rotate will now rotate in the anti clockwise direction because of the force of attraction between the opposite poles after half a cycle the polarity of the stator pole is reversed so the pole which was north pole now has become the south pole and the pole which was south pole has become the north pole so after half cycle the polarity of the stator pole has reversed but the rotor poles could not due to the inertia so the rotor poles have not changed its position due to the inertia of the rotor because the rotor is heavy thus light poles are facing each other so if we see the stator poles and the rotor poles they are the light poles which are facing each other so the north pole and the north pole are facing each other and the south pole and south pole are facing each other when light poles face each other there will be a force of repulsion and a clockwise torque will be produced in the rotor first the anti clockwise torque was there now we have a clockwise torque due to the force of repulsion hence the torque produced in a three phase synchronous motor is not unidirectional so first the torque was anti clockwise now the torque is clockwise so it indicates that a three phase synchronous motor is not unidirectional and the motor is not self starting so the motor could not start its own as the three phase induction motor however if synchronous machine is rotated by some external means at the start so some external mechanism is required to rotate the rotor so that it also reverses its polarity as the polarity of the stator pole we know that the stator poles has re revolved and the rotor could not due to the inertia but if some external mechanism we can rotate the rotor poles in such a way that stator poles has been rotated then after half cycle it would have been reversed then a continuous force of attraction between the stator and the rotor poles might have exist so this is only possible if there is some external mechanism by which the rotor is rotated if there is a force of attraction between the stator and the rotor poles which is continuous then that is known as the magnetic locking it means the poles of the rotor and the poles of the stator has locked so it is known as magnetic locking the feature of magnetic locking is it will drag the rotor poles by the stator revolving field 
and a continuous torque is obtained. So earlier the torque which was anti-clockwise direction and then it was in the clockwise direction will become unidirectional and a continuous torque will produce if by some external means the rotor is rotated and there is a magnetic locking between the stator and the rotor. As the rotor cones are dragged by the stator revolving field, hence the rotor rotates in the same speed as that of the stator revolving field. Due to the dragging of the rotor by the stator revolving field, the rotor is rotating at the same speed as that of the stator revolving field which is the synchronous speed of the machine. So both stator field as well as the rotor is revolving at the same speed. Hence we can say that the synchronous machine or the synchronous motor runs at a constant speed and this constant speed is known as the synchronous speed of the machine. So the rotor is rotating at the same speed as that of the stator revolving field and that is known as the synchronous speed of the machine and hence the machine is said to be the synchronous machine. This speed is given by ns is equal to 120 f by p where f is again the frequency and p is the number of poles of, for which the machine is designed and ns is being the synchronous speed of the machine. So we have seen the important characteristic as well as the principle of operation of the synchronous motor. In the next lecture we are going to discuss the methods or the external means by which we can start the synchronous motor. Thank you for now and see you in the next lecture.